Artist John Silver is off to another day at the office. But unlike most folks, his office is wherever he decides to set up his easel. Most likely somewhere along our state's outer banks. And this day, right outside his door, a place he'd rather be than anywhere. There was a sign that a guy had in Mandia. He said, I wasn't born here, but I got here quick as I could. And I kind of feel that same way. John brings his paints and an extraordinary eye for shape, shade, and color to his work. Give him a subject he's seen perhaps thousands of times, and he'll paint it fresh every time. We're in Nags Head at the second oldest house on the oceanfront in Nags Head. It's belonged in my family since around 1875. It's my favorite place in the world. All happy memories here. My great-grandfather got it and passed it on to his children and then to their children, and I'm the fourth generation. Anyway, I love it as a subject. The light hits the house and the sky is crisp in the summer and the shadows cast by the shutters are just wonderful. Great painting subjects give you beautiful shapes to paint. If, as da Vinci claims, painting is poetry that is seen rather than felt, then John Silver surely is a poet. I started about 10 years ago with oils and gradually changed from a studio painter into a, what I would call a plein air painter or a, an outdoor painter. I mean, there's a metamorphosis there because you have to change the way you think about painting. You have to be very familiar with your colors, confident with your brushwork, be able to stick to the shapes that you see and not think about the objects. You start out by painting the things that you love. And if you love it, people will love it as well. I've had lots of artists that I consider mentors. You know, I've looked at paintings forever. Vincent Van Gogh is my favorite painter of all time. It was Van Gogh who once said that the only time I feel alive is when I'm painting. And John Silver seems to come most alive when he's painting what appears to be his favorite subject, or at least one of them, blue crabs. I started painting blue crabs in about the mid 90s. Over time, I have probably painted hundreds of crabs. I never tire of it, they're beautiful. A crab is a perfect setup for a painter because he has uh, lots of blue and then spots of orange on him. I think nature had a plan. Direction of your brush stroke in oil paint says a lot, especially if you paint with a little bit thicker paint as you go along. I paint from memory a lot. I, I think it's very good for you as a painter. I think the hardest thing for people to do to learn to paint is become the viewer of their own work. They get so involved in the painting that it's hard for them to be a viewer, the person that would be looking at it hanging on a wall somewhere. in a race to the finish to use all the paint, it's starting to come to life a little bit. It takes about two hours to complete each work. The artist's name is the final touch, and as far as silver is concerned, the painting's done. And soon, this signature crab likely will join its many colorful cousins in John's gallery, and eventually end up brightening someone's home. My greatest mentor of all has been a guy named James P. Kerr. And I saw his work in a gallery in Raleigh and bought a couple of paintings and then called him and called him and finally got up with him and we immediately became painting buddies. Work by his painting buddy can be seen alongside his own in Silver's Roanoke Island Gallery. And the stylistic influences are readily apparent. But it's back on the beach where sea, sky, and imagination ultimately meet, and where the old family cottage gathers form and life on John's canvas, as the light around him and on his subject continues to change. 
Painting on location, you have to work pretty quickly because you have ever-changing light and conditions. I started with the whole sky, in particular in this, in this particular painting. I got my shape and my shadows and my light, but I started with a pretty flat sky, just graded color. And over time, it's morphed, so a few clouds and some more atmospheres moved in. So it kind of suits the painting more to me. So I changed the sky from the horizon up about midway and then took it on up with a few different values. My thought on outside painting is that I try to hit the optimum light period and get all that down on the canvas as quickly as possible. Then once I have that, I can fine tune and use my subject or the object that I'm painting or the landscape just for clues. What is there about watching art being made that seems so effortless, so easy, especially to those of us not so gifted? Some mix of talent, skill, experience, and determination, no doubt. But in the case of this man, this artist, John Silver, it also seems to be the influence of that special place he's chosen to live and work. Everything about the coast appeals to me. I love the salt air. I think it gets in your veins and sand gets in your shoes if you choose to wear them. Sometimes I say if I go as far inland as Edenton, I might get a nosebleed. <laughs> 